Experiments made up on the sea have been objected to on account of its constantly changing altitude, and the existence of banks and channels which produce a crowding of the waters, currents, and other irregularities. Standing water has therefore been selected, and many important experiments have been made, the most simple of which is the following. In the county of Cambridge, there is an artificial river or canal called the Old Bedford. It is upwards of 20 miles long and passes straight, in a straight line through that part of the fens called the Bedford Level. The water is nearly stationary, often entirely so, and throughout its entire length has no interruption from locks or water gates, so that it is, in every respect, well adapted for ascertaining whether any and what amount of convexivity really exists. A boat with a flag standing three feet above the water was directed to sail from a place called Wellney Bridge to another place called Welch's Dam. These two points are six statute miles apart. The observer, with a good telescope, was seated in the water as a bather, it being the summer season, with the eye not exceeding eight inches above the surface. The flag and the boat down to the water's edge were clearly visible throughout the whole distance. From this observation, it was concluded that the water did not decline to any degree from the line of sight, whereas the water would be six feet higher in the center of the arc of six miles extent than at the two places, Welney Bridge and Welch's Dam, but as the eye of the observer was only eight inches above the water, the highest point on the surface would be at one mile from the place of observation, below which point the surface of the water at the end of the remaining five miles would be 16 feet 8 inches, or 5 squared times 8 equals 200 inches. This will be rendered clear by the following diagram. Let AB represent the arc of water from Welney Bridge to Welch's Dam, six miles in length, and AL the line of sight, which is now a tangent to the arc, AB. The point of contact, T, is one mile from the eye of the observer at A, and from T to the boat at B is five miles. The square of five miles multiplied by eight inches is 200 inches, or in other words, that the boat at B would have been 200 inches or above 16 feet below the surface of the water at T. And the flag on the boat, which was three feet high, would have been 13 feet below the line of sight at ATL. From this experiment, it follows that the surface of standing water is not convex, and therefore that the earth is not a globe. On the contrary, this simple experiment is all sufficient to prove that the surface of the water is parallel to the line of sight and is therefore horizontal, and that the earth cannot be other than a plane. In diagram figure 3, this is perfectly illustrated. Picture 3. AB is the line of sight and CD the surface of the water equidistant from or parallel to it throughout the whole distance observed although, on account of the variable state of the water, objections have been raised to experiments made upon the seashore to test the convexivity of the flood or ebb tide level, none can be urged against observations made from higher altitudes. For example, the distance across the Irish Sea between Douglas Harbour in the Isle of Man and the Great Orm's Head in North Wales is 60 miles. If the earth is a globe and the surface of the water would form an arc, 60 miles in length, the center of which would be 1,944 feet higher than the coastline at either end, so that an observer would be obliged to attain this altitude before he could see the Welsh coast from the Isle of Man, as shown in the diagram figure 4. It is well known, however, that from an altitude not exceeding 100 feet, that the Great Orm's Head is visible in clear weather from Douglas Harbor. The altitude of 100 feet could cause the line of sight to touch the horizon at the distance of nearly 13 miles, and from the horizon to Orm's Head being 47 miles, the square of this number multiplied by 8 inches gives 1,472 feet as the distance which the Welsh coastline would need to be below the line of sight, BC. A representing the Great Orm's Head, which is being 600 feet high in its summit, would be 872 feet 
below the horizon. Many similar experiments have been made across the St. George's Canal between points near Dublin and Hollyhead and always with results entirely incompatible with the doctrine of rotundity. Again, it is known that the horizon at sea, whatever distance it may extend to the right and left of the observer on land, always appears as a straight line. The following experiment has been tried in various parts of the country at Brighton on a rising ground near the race course. Two poles were fixed in the earth six yards apart and directly opposite the sea. Between these poles a line was tightly stretched parallel to the distant horizon. From center of the line, the view embraced not less than 20 miles on each side, making a distance of 40 miles. A vessel was observed sailing directly westwards. The line cut the rigging a little above the bulkwards, which it did, did for several hours, or until the vessel had sailed at the whole distance of 40 miles. This will be understood by reference to the diagram figure 5. If the Earth were a globe, the appearance would be as represented in figure 6. The ship coming into view from the east would have to ascend an inclined plane for 20 miles until it arrived at the center of an arc AB, whence it would have to descend for the same distance. The square of 20 miles multiplied by 8 inches gives 266 feet as the amount the vessel would be below the line CD at the beginning and at the end of the 40 miles. If we stand upon the deck of a ship or mount to the mast ahead or go to the top of a mountain or ascend above the earth in a balloon and look over the sea, the surface appears as a vast inclined plane raising up in the distance it intercepts the line of sight. If a good mirror can be held in the opposite direction, the horizon will be reflected as a well-defined mark or line across the center as represented in the diagram figure 7. Ascending or descending, the distant horizon does the same. It rises and falls with the observer and is always on a level with his eye. If he takes a position where the water surrounds him as at the masthead of a ship out of sight of land or on the summit of a small island far from the mainland, the surface of the sea appears to rise up on all sides equally and to surround him like the walls of an immense amphitheater. He seems to be in the center of a large concavity, the edges of which expand or contract as he takes a higher or lower position. This appearance is so well known to seagoing travelers that nothing more need be said in its support but the appearance from a balloon is familiar only to a small number of observers and therefore it will be useful to quote from those who have written upon the subject. The apparent quote Wise's Aeronautics quote the apparent concavity of the earth as seen from a balloon a perfectly formed circle encompassed by the visible planisphere beneath or rather the concave osphere it might be called, for I had attained a height from which the surface of the earth assumed a regularly hollowed or concave appearance, an optical illusion which increases as you recede from it. At the greatest elevation I ever attained, which was about a mile and a half, the appearance of the world around me assumed a shape or form like that which is made by placing two watch glasses together by their edges the balloon apparently in the central cavity all the time of its flight at the elevation. End quote. Wise's Aeronautics. Great World of London. Quote, Another curious effect of the serial ascent was that the Earth, when we were at our greatest altitude, positively appeared concave, looking like a huge dark bowl, rather than the convex sphere such as we naturally expect to see. The horizon always appeared to be on a level with our eye and seems to rise as we rise until at length of the elevation of the circular boundary line of sight becomes so marked that the earth assumes the anomalous appearance, as we have said, of a concave rather than a convex body. Mayhew's Great World of London, end quote. 
Mr. Elliot, an American aeronaut, in a letter giving an account of his ascension from Baltimore, thus speaks of the appearance of the earth from a balloon. Quote, I don't know that I ever hinted heretofore that the aeronaut may well be most skeptical man about the rotundity of the earth. Philosophy imposes the truth upon us, but the view of the earth from the elevation of a balloon is that of an immense terrestrial basin, the deeper part of which is that directly under one's feet. As we ascend, the earth be beneath us seems to recede, actually to sink away, while the horizon gra gradually and gracefully lifts a diversified slope stretching away further and further to a line that at the highest elevation seems to close with the sky. Thus upon a clear day, the aeronaut feels as if suspended at about an equal distance between the vast blue oceanic concave above and the equally expanded terrestrial basin below. The chief peculiarity of the view from a balloon at a considerable elevation was the altitude of the horizon, which remained practically on level with the eye at elevations of two miles, causing the surface of the earth to appear concave instead of convex, and to recede during the rapid ascent, whilst the horizon and the balloon seem to be stationary. End quote. London Journal, July 18, 1857. During the important balloon ascents recently made for scientific purposes by Mr. Croxwell and Mr. Glacier of the Royal Greenwich Observatory, the same phenomenon was observed. The horizon always appeared on level with the car. Vide, Gallisher's report. The following diagram represents this appearance. Figure 8. The surface of the Earth, CD, appears to rise to the line of sight from the balloon and seems to close with the sky. At the points HH, in the same manner that the ceiling and the floor of a long room or the top and bottom of a tunnel appear to approach each other and from the same cause visually that they are parallel to the line of sight and therefore horizontal. If the earth's surface were convex the observer looking from a balloon instead of seeing it gradually ascend to the level of the eye would have, a, have to look downwards to the horizon HH represented in figure 10 and the amount of dip in the line of sight, CH, would be the greatest at the highest elevation. Many more experiments have been made that are here described, but the selection now given is amply sufficient to prove that the surface of water is horizontal and that the earth, taken as a whole, its land and water together, is not a globe, has really no degree of sphericity, but is to all intents and purposes a plane. If we now consider the fact that when we travel by land or sea and from any part of the known world in a direction towards the North Polar Star we shall arrive at one and the same point. We are forced to the conclusion that what has hitherto been called the North Polar Region is really the center of the earth. That from its northern center the land diverges and stretches out of necessity towards a circumference which must now be called the southern region, which is a vast circle, and not a pole or center, that there is one center, the north, and one circumference, the south, this language will be better understood by reference to the diagram in figure 10. Figure 10. North represents the northern center, and SSS the southern circumference both icy or frozen regions, that the south is an immense ring or glacial boundary is evident from the fact that within the Antarctic Circle the most experienced scientific and daring navigators have failed in their attempts to sail in a direct manner completely around it. Lieutenant Wilkes of the American Navy, after great and prolonged efforts and much confusion in his reckoning,